Okay, so meeting has recorded. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. That chime means it's it's starting time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for reminder. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Xiao Li Li, and today I'm very happy and very excited having the first town hall meeting um, for Igloo Iluna Linked Open Data Working Group. So for today, the topic we choose is thinking about two linked data and back again, mainly talk about the conversion tools or the conversion activities from a mock record to bib frame description or from a bib frame description back to mock. Um, Laura Ackman will join me as the moderator for today's meeting. So in first 10 minutes or so, we will just have a very quick introduction. And then most of the time, we would like to have a meaningful and a discussing. So hopefully you will either send your questions through chat or you will unmute yourself and ask for a question. But Please use the chat to indicate you have a question you want you want to ask or there's a comment you want to make. And Laura will um, organizing the questions, will organize the question and also uh, call upon you when it's your turn. So please use the chat as much as possible, given we have over 70 people participating. Uh, in order to make it more meaningful in a more orderly fashion for the meeting, we thought that might be the best way to go is has Laura moderate uh, the sequence of the people who can speak and ask questions or make comment. Okay, thank you. So here's the agenda. Um, I just use one minute also to talk about why we're having those, this town hall meeting. And then Laura will introduce today's topic. Then hopefully we'll save at least 40 minutes to do some in-depth discussing. Um, Linked, Open, Linked Open Data Working Group is a joint uh, working group between Iluna and Igloo, which means we have members representing Iluna and Igloo. So for this past year, uh, every working group uh, asked, were asked, was asked to create future working plans for a group. So for us, we identified four major activity, which we think will be very good and it's nice, or at least will um, make our group work harder for our member. Um, we identified the following four major activities and hopefully we can achieve be between 2020 and 2021. So the first one is um, continue to support the development of linked open data features in Exlibris products. Um, and also we've, we have some relationship but we really want a stronger uh, support and collaboration with other working groups, such as AMA, Primo, and other Exlibris users group. Uh, in addition, we know in order to accomplish those tasks, we do need new members to join us. So, so far, um, we already have a couple of liaisons to different groups to support our second agenda item, which is a stronger activity and relationship. Um, so the fourth one, that is the reason we are having today's, oh, sorry, something happened. The fourth one is the reason we are having today's meeting. We decided to try pilot this for this year. We're going to offer quarterly town hall meetings and for each town hall meeting, we identify one topic we think is probably most relevant and useful to our members. 
and do the brief presentation and then open for discussing. So today is our first town hall meeting and definitely since this is a pilot, we're trying and our goal is to make our groups work as meaningful as useful to our members and also facilitate and solicitate your comments and ideas. So this is a, this is a background I'd like to give to you and let you know why we're having this town hall meeting. Now I'm going to turn to Laura to introduce today's topic. Oh, Laura, you, you thank you. you. I do. Okay, got it. <coughs> so the link linked open data working group has a history of involvement with um, uh, the mark and bit frame conversions. Um, and uh, the perspective that we have is um, since May 2011, when the Library of Congress announced bit frame as being developed for as a replacement for Mark, um, we recognize that there are. Uh, Mark has a a, a a very important role now for libraries. Um, it's used by I won't say I, I don't know the percentage, but I would say the majority of libraries in this country and many other libraries throughout the world, uh, along with uh, descriptive standards. And this somewhat standardization enables sharing of records, which is an important part of the ecology or the economic uh, aspect of um, providing a description and discovery uh, for libraries. Um, so there are a lot of mark records out there and systems that are right now designed to use them. So conversion tools uh, that work are essential if the new data structures are going to be able to come in and, and move forward. Um, next. Okay, so the um, the first converter from uh, Bib from Mark. Whoops. No, that's a typo. That should be marked a bit frame converter. Oh, oh, oh we'll fix. Um, so that was, um, it came out in March 2017. Um, it so happened that uh, Amanda Shu uh, had organized a paper, which I was co-author along with Kirk Hess of the Library of Congress. And um, uh, because of the timing, what we ended up doing was reviewing the new converter um, um, that, that the Library of Congress had made, made available. Um, and uh, we uncovered a number of issues, many of which uh, have been fixed. Uh, some of the major ones included mark elements that were not converted and uh, the placement of the administrative metadata section and um, sort of the data architecture of provenance in general didn't seem like it had been thoroughly thought of, out at the time. Um, meanwhile, ex Ex Libris incorporated the Library of Congress converter into Alma. Uh, and I believe they worked with a development partner, but uh, when it was released, it was sort of in a beta state. So the Link Data Working Group and uh, other customers who were invited, customers were openly invited uh, to a base camp uh, that we happened to have available where we could communicate with Ex Libris staff, they could ask us questions, we could ask them questions. And this led to improvements uh, in, the, in the conversion process, both from the Library of Congress side, um, because they happened to be Ex Libris customers, so they were able to, to communicate in this mix too, and Ex Libris. Next. Um, and I would say things have been, been sort of quiet about that. Uh, the product was, was being able to uh, convert 
Mark Records in Alma to bib frame to display that bib frame in the Alma editor to make it available for publishing or uh, for APIs. Um, um, so we come up to today and in, in the context of this, uh, Ex Libris has, has on their roadmap to pro provide a native bib frame editor um, in, in Alma. And the Library of Congress has released a bib frame to mark converter tool, um, which the, wor the working group is, is, has done some review of and assembled you know, some questions and problems and communicated them to Library of Congress. And some of these problems were already in line to be corrected, but some main it, major issues remain, particularly data that was lost from MARC, from the MARC to bib frame conversion, which the Library of Congress didn't think that they needed to convert. Um, it, it's not in bib frame, so it can't be reconverted back to the MARC record. And there may be some areas where uh, that data needs to be there. Um, and handling of Romanized fields when the language of the work or of cataloging is a non-Roman script. Um, so if you're familiar with MARC records and the 880 alternate graphic representation fields, those after the conversion to bib frame are no longer there. They're, so they're no longer there to be a part of a MARC record again. Uh, so the, these are, um, these kind of give rise, rise to some questions. Um, uh, how, how important will it be to be able to reconvert back to MARC for one thing? Uh, what's going to be impact on our data sources if Library of Congress stops cataloging in MARC to begin with and uh, all of their records come to us as, as converted Mark records from bib frame, uh, and and you know otherwise, but um, I like to talk a, just say that for this meeting, let's not just limit it to the actions of the converters, but think a little bit larger into, well, what local choices would institutions want to make. Um, either to expand bib, bib frame or to change the way the conversion process works um, or uh, perhaps other local choices that we would need to make um, in order to satisfy the needs of our institutions, which may be different than the Library of Congress's. Um, that's, that's one thought. So now next slide. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll can leave it here. Okay. Yes. There there are um, uh, many other groups that are are no doubt looking at this uh, program for cooperative cataloging and share VDE. Uh, I think formally uh, LD for P projects and European bib frame conferences. Uh, it has it has been a topic um, among others. So. Uh, and I'm sure Library of Congress is still gathering in, in, input from uh, <clears throat> uh, various sources as to uh, uh, how they can improve the conversions processes. So with that said, next. Okay, I'll, we'll leave that here and um, here are some links to our working group if you want to get involved with it. Uh, the YouTube channel where we will post the video uh, after this meeting. And um, now I'm going to turn it over to Shali to get the discussion started. Thank you, Laura. Do you want to check to see if we have any questions submitted through chat first? No, we don't have any questions to start with. So we have some questions okay. for you, <coughs> for our visitors. Okay. 
Okay, so I see one saying just to submit to chat. When you're looking at that, let me find my list of questions. I will stop sharing. Okay, I will find my question. Yeah, it was, we had it, we pasted it earlier. I can maybe copy it from here. Yeah. We'll see. On the slide? Yes. Um, let me see if I can paste it back in again. Yes, it worked. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Okay, so if there's no question, I'm going to ask a few to see if I can get some comments and feedback um, from, uh, from you all. So uh, once I finish question, please feel free to unmute yourself if you want to speak. And I'm going to also post the question into the chat. So let me post the first. Okay. So the first question, I just posted it into chat. Um, how can we handle non-Roman data or Romanized data if bib frame change to mark no longer putting back Romanized data? And uh, do you think you have to make some change to those records in order for your local discovery system to use it? or in order to do whatever your local functions requires. So for example, your publisher's information will completely in non-Romanized data. For if it's, if it's Japanese, it will be represented as a Japanese character. Um, and probably your series tracing will be that way as well. Do you think that will cost problem for your discovery? Um, for your indexing? If so, do you think your library feel have to do some work in order to reuse the data? Uh, shall we leave? Uh, what about yeah. access points? This is Stephen Hearn in Minnesota. You know, to me, access points to the point where it's going to be rubbing up against other records and having problems. Access point? Are you Are you thinking like one XX? Like like an um, author access point for someone who writes in both Japanese and uh, English. You're going to presumably want English language records representing the person and Japanese records representing the person. How will they connect? for someone who's looking exhaustively for that author in your work, in your collection. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so if I remember um, for the access point, there will be still romanized field available. And, and also besides in the link data environment, hopefully uh, the con relationship is created by using the unique URI regardless what type of label you're using. For example, if you have one record, just have a Japanese name as author, and you have another record that has just the Romanized name for the author, but because both record contain that URI pointing to the same person, I'm hoping that's how future will connect those two um, works from the same author together. Um, but in terms of conversion tools, currently conversion tools still using Romanized field for the access points because that's what authority record has been created is using Romanized form. Mm -hmm. did, sorry, did I answer this question? And yeah, anybody that, else has yeah. a comment? Okay. Well, I have a question, and this is somewhat of a naive question because I've been away from cataloging for quite a long time. 
but in the authority record, is there any indication of what script or language a particular form of name is in? Um, in yes. In because authority record? In, yeah. Sorry. Some, somebody is trying to answer the question. I remember okay. that the German okay. National okay. Library got agreement that there's a certain coding convention you could use at the end of a field that specifies script, mm -hmm. if I'm remembering right. So I think it's possible. I don't think it's done now. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I, I, I looked at one. I didn't see any hooks, you know, um, uh, for determining what if you're trying to take data from an authority record that you used to have in your MARC record, how are you going to know which language version, what version of a particular label, if you will, uh, label in what language you want to get? Um, that's That said, I, I think with the titles, particularly uh, our Primo system uh, displays the quote unquote vernacular title when we have uh, a version in non-Roman script uh, in the search results. Uh, but I think, I think there would be some loss if only the vernacular title showed up in the search results, even if um, that would be enough for people who speak, who read the language, uh, because sometimes there are people learning the language or there are people who want to search for something, but they don't have they, you know, the capacity to input those characters easily. So um, in, from where we sit in the world um, and with our, our student and faculty Publication uh, that is is very you know contains uh, people you know international students have, and many uh, Japanese Chinese students um, and and from other parts of the world Tibetans you know uh, we we have a, a great mixture but the majority of them are I think of our students are English speaking um, natively and and would find it difficult to deal with records that only have vernacular version, but others would be missing something if the actual title as it appeared on the title page in Tibetan wasn't there. Uh, we, we would like both. Yeah, okay, so I see one comment from uh, um, Dan from U University of Washington. She doesn't have a Mac. But she says, we still need Romanized data for the descriptive fields. Mm -hmm. um, so, and says, I hope our library isn't forced to find a solution to this on our own. Uh, one PCC working group put out a paper that recommending, um, recommended finding a place for Romanized data in BibFrame. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've been thinking about, I know this Romanized or non-Romanized or having what type of data, it has been the topic in the library community since probably 1990s. At that time, there's also debate whether we should continue to do Romanized data. Remember, Romanized data was introduced when at the time when library technology wasn't able to input and display the native scripts. And so was introduced as a sort of a substitute, but now there is a possibility. I mean, there's a capable of doing that. Um, I think maybe it is a time to think about, okay, if we need the data, but do we need the catalog manually put it in? Mm -hmm. So it, is it possible having one type of data, but automatically using machine algorithm to supply other type of data? 
Um, I want to say for different language, maybe different. For example, for the language with tone, tone like Chinese, Vietnamese, there is impossible to make romanized data convert to native scripts because it's just too many one to too many relationship. But it is possible convert from a Chinese character using machine to romanize the data. So what I think in the future, maybe to save catalogers time is we put into in the data, which is probably good for machine to, to do conversion to the other type of scripts. If a library think that's useful to them. But again, I can see there is unsettled um, issues in this area because first of all, we don't have a very good tools to do those work. And also we have a limits of what our discovery system can do. And most important, and I think as a human being, we all have a habit. We feel a certain way, we feel more comfortable than other ways. So this basically technology issue and a human psychology issue and the uh, mind shift issue. Um, I, I like to see if there is more comments um, before I move to next question. Hi, can I, I mean, ask this a question? Is, yes. Hi, this is Stephen Bernstein from Central Connecticut State University. Um, about what you were just saying, uh, I, I feel that the romanized uh, metadata uh, is not just there to serve the, the user, it's also uh, usable by uh, the librarians who may not have uh, knowledge of the vernacular script. So uh, I imagine you have uh, uh, circulation uh, you know, people uh, who would need the Romanized uh, um, forms of the different headings in the, in, the, in the record. And so I think it would be a very bad idea to move in a direction where we're only using the vernacular. Um, interesting, I think I want to mention, yeah. I know somebody uh, mentioned that there is a group at the lab, uh, linked the data, for production group. It's called the Non-Latin Scripts Affinity Group. The group did do a survey and <coughs> basically we got over 900 responses regarding how useful the Romanized data is. And in that survey, we list them different fields and also categorize them as, this is more for patron, this is more for library staff and so on. If you're interested in reading that report, um, I'd be happy to send it through the list serve after meeting because it may take a little bit of time for me to find it. Unless somebody can find that report and post it uh, to the chat. I believe it's on LD, LD4P um, website. Mm -hmm. So we got another- Thank you for the comment. Uh, Stephen Hearn. Um, mentions, I don't know if you want to say this yourself, Stephen, about um, id.loc.gov. Um, and you're saying that the, the, uh, that version of an LCMARC authority emits some data. Should we yeah. be thinking about what id.loc.gov conveys? Um, and can we even tell? I mean, I look at the what displays and, and I, but I think ID.LOC.GOV is the linked data address yes. for this data. It should, so if you would presume that it has everything <laughs> the authority record is yeah, supposed so to have. We just, we want to be sure there's no the bait and switch going on. It doesn't have the vernacular version. Yeah. If it's not in the authority record, where does it go? Um, this is, I'm getting this vision of like libraries saying, no, don't update you know, our Library of Congress records that came from the Library of Congress, OCLC, we don't want to lose anything. <laughs> and that's not a good situation. Uh, now, uh, we have another comment. What are the plans for more 
administrative metadata going back and forth from Bibframe to Mark to show provenance of metadata statements since we will no longer have a single record in Bibframe, but rather description sets made up of triples. So this is Sue. Sue, do you want to elaborate on this? Um, yeah, yeah. I was thinking of um, how the library world right now depends on the origin of the, the or the authoritative source of different elements of description sets uh, or mark, if you want to call it mark records. And we're going to be unbundling that in Bibframe. Uh, in at least three pieces, um, and how will people how will people identify what the source of the metadata is for any given element, or or do we not care anymore? <laughs> I think we still care. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, any anyone want to speak yeah, to that? that? So um, Nancy Falgren says id.loc.gov contains a lot of different data. What data exactly are we talking about? And I think we're talking about variant, um, variant names and uh, variant names expressed in the vernacular script is my guess. But Stephen, you may, um, yeah, he's saying, Stephen says he just looked at mouse entry in id.loc.gov and no vernacular variants displayed. What determines what displays? That's, uh, I guess that's a question for Library of Congress. Now we, we have someone from Library of Congress here, but we said we're not going to put our invited guests on the spot to answer questions. Uh, but this is a question we could look into, you know, uh, is part of if part of this strategy is is taking data out of the okay. Jody Williamson posts uh, a link to a name in id.loc.gov that has vernacular variants. So this is yeah this is Mao. There are vernacular variants there that um, have different scripts. I can't identify all of them, but but I don't know. Without digging into um, maybe the different flavors of the Mark XML or Mads, etc., whether that there, there's anything uh, associated with those variant names to identify what language they're in. Uh, so you know there are non-Roman variants there, but which one is? is the variant that um, appears on the title page of this book. Uh, Sorry, it was my mistake. I realized I was looking at something that was a Mao document, not a Mao person. Uh, okay, okay. So there are variants in there, but you know, how is that gonna work? Um, let me get back to the Zoom here. Um, Ben, yeah, Ben Reisenberg, I do. You, I'll just read yours, and if you want to uh, comment some more, it may be helpful to remember that a key characteristic of linked data is the linking. The assertion that, for example, a resource description in id.loc.gov is the same one in another data source from another institution in another country, etc which contains descriptive statements in other languages, scripts, et cetera. And that by utilizing linked data tools, querying across the data sources, we can access these additional descriptions. Right, that's, that's supposedly, that's how it's supposed to work. That's good. I wanna go back to um, uh, a new question that got raised by somebody. We can come back to um, maybe the, the um, vernacular language is issue, but um, um, what are the plans for administrative metadata? 
and provenance. Um, so does anybody else have comments about, about that, about how that might be done better? Or um, uh, if there's something, some more elements needed in our link to data that would allow us to identify provenance better, maybe. Um, I'll just say, I don't know, I haven't looked at, at BibFrame lately, but uh, for BibFrame 2.0, the administrative metadata was, uh, that came out of the MARC record was linked to the work. And uh, this didn't make a lot of sense to me because mark a mark record mostly most most describes uh, an instance. And if you're going to cluster together all the instances that belong to a particular work, where you you know how are you going to distinguish which administrative metadata goes with which instance? Um, so that needs to be sorted out in some kind of way. I think that the mark record could very well be an object that has a URI and that you could reference it in whatever provenance you want to give to a group of triples to say that they were derived from this mark record. And then, you know, whatever data is in the fields that are in administrative metadata uh, that is relevant to the work or to the instance uh, could be could be mapped there in BibFrame, but the, in terms of the uh, what was the original cataloging agency in the 040 and that sort of thing, that's information that comes from. Uh, it's really about the mark record. Uh, but feel free to challenge me on that because, like I said, I haven't been a cataloger in ages. Okay, so we have links now in the chat to um, um, the LD for P2 non-Latin script materials affinity group and their report. And, and Nancy says currently in Sinopia, there is admin metadata for the works instances at L. There is no admin data profiles in Sinopia for everyone at this time, but it is coming. Okay, so that Sinopia is, is of course, linked data editing tool uh, developed for the LD4P projects. Um, Nancy, are you saying that um, you're doing something different with um, the sort of the MARC record specific metadata? than uh, the regular bib frame conversion is doing? Um, so we, so- uh, of course that, that editor is for creating native, native bib frame, I understand. But uh, how, you know, so it, how are you handling converted data from MARC records? Um, we're not, we're not. Web, we're not. I'm sorry, finish what you were asking? No, sorry, sorry I interrupted you. Uh, well, I was just gonna say this is, this is for when, we are, when we are creating original data, bid frame data in Sinopia, we have, we have created, NLM has created um, an administrative metadata um, um, template that, that we are that we are using, um, and another university created a, also created a template, and um, they were very similar. We talked about it. We kind of came to some agreement on it, and um, I think that the PCC profiles for Synopia, which should be coming hopefully sometime early next year, um, are also kind of took what we did and used, used it as a, um, to, to create a, an admin metadata that everybody could use. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, it, um, is it associated with the work or with the instance? It's associated, it, it's, it's, you can use it with, you do add different admin metadata for the work, you do admin metadata for the, um, for the instance 
And then obviously you can have your own admin metadata if you have, um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have, um, I kind of lost the, the, the thought of what the, the third, when, when it's your own, when it's your own item. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I think um, this is a very good discussion. We definitely, I feel the administrative metadata, the questions to ask, um, I think there's a two layer. One is you are on the, like the work level or instance level, but it's also, is it necessary to have a provenance information after each statement? For example, I mean, a, a description, you can have a multiple institution contribute to that description, but if you just want to use certain libraries meta, created the metadata because you feel they're more higher quality, you trust them more, how can you select those statements out of a, a mix of everything? Currently in the mark record, we have 042 field identified that is being authenticated by PCC library. Um, and so I think the many library looking at that authentication code and they think, okay, which means that record has been reviewed, meaning every single um, mark field. But would that happen in bib frame? That is, I think is, a, I don't think there's an answer to that yet. Yes, we can create a public administrative metadata on the work instance level, but I'm not sure if anybody looking to the possibility of having the provenance data after each statement. Mm -hmm. And is that useful? And I don't think, but I can be run. I, I don't feel that has been really discussed in, in depth. And definitely, I don't think there's any decision has been made. Mm -hmm. by th any community. I think it has been um, part of the sort of the metadata architecture decisions of some of the institutions in Europe. And um, um, at the European BibFrame conference, I was, I was sort of struck by the, the design uh, that the uh, National Library of Hungary, I believe, is talking about, uh, you know, a, a uh, linked data-based um, descriptive environment and being able to um, uh, natively create it and store it and so forth and, and power a lot of different things. Um, but the fact that they said they were going to have five, their triples are going to have five elements, okay? And one of them is, is just sort of identifying that this is part of a set of, of descriptive elements that belong together. You could say, it sounded to me like that it was, it was giving a URI to something that you could construct as a record. So we think we're getting away from records, but really not. But we have to have then four, a quad. Uh, but another one maybe had to do with provenance. I, 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 don't quote me on it because that, that presentation went by very, very fast. There's nobody from, from the National Library of Hungary here today, is there? Oh, okay. So we don't yeah. get clarity, but I think people are thinking about this, about how to right. nail down what data came from where and what data belongs together. Um, right. So in the yes, that's right. I, I remember, I think. In, right. Yeah, I so, think but, Nicholas pre did that presentation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the what we can do is maybe Laura, we can send out that presentation link to that presentation to our list of serve after meeting, just uh, in case okay. it's useful. It's from uh, this past year's European Big Frame Workshop. Yes. Okay. So thank you, and I think that's probably again it's ongoing discussion, but I 
I posted the next question on the chat. Uh, basically just asking, has your library actually used the converted data? Can be mark to bib frame or from bib frame to mark. If you have used the converted data, have you run into any challenge, challenges or issues, or do you have any tips or any experience to share with the group? We'll give folks a minute. Apparently not. We're not getting any okay. uh, responses. Okay, then I'm going to. This is early. Uh, has anybody at least looked at um, maybe the conversions of their uh, that Alma is providing, or shared them with anyone? Not yet. Okay, then I post the third. I post the third question. Does your library see the need to convert your mark records to bib frame or vice versa? And and Radmila Baladas uh, responds, "We have not, but I'm wondering if it is possible for us to test a conversion in Alma on one record at a time." Okay, um, Radmila, uh, there is a feature in Elma now. Um, maybe somebody that's more familiar with, with Alma can describe it, where you go to see uh, your bib frame conversion on your mark data. Any volunteers? Yeah. Ah, I, I can show my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, see, so for example, I'm now inside AMA. Uh, if I want to find a record to see how it's been converted to link data, a bib frame, I don't know how to type. So I first find the record I'm interested. Sorry, take a time to search. Okay, I think, um, see this is the book. And I remember you can see it from here, link data. Can, can you all see my screen? Yes. So here's one way you can see the link, link data, but it come up with this, um, not truly the bib frame description. If you want to see the bib frame, you need to go into the record editor mode. Here, see this bib frame button, button oh, is here. Right. If you click, it should show you um, how this record has been converted from mark to bib frame using Lab of Congress mark to bib frame converter. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically finding a record you want to see and going to the record view, you can see it either mark or bib frame. If you want to see slightly different link data display, then you can do it on your search result, which I just showed. And that isn't a bib frame. This one is a bib frame, has much more information. Okay. Right. Also, Ramila says, can you preview a bib frame record in Primo? 
um, not out of the box. I think I, um, I suppose uh, it would be possible using the API to add a feature to preview a boot frame record in Primo if you wanted to, but I don't know. Um, sorry about that. I can't turn that old phone off. It doesn't work, but it keeps ringing. Um, <clears throat> Uh, but I think um, it, this is not something most end users would want to see. So, uh, however, I guess another question would be, can you utilize BibFrame data uh, from within Primo? And, and there is an API uh, that allows you to retrieve a, a BibFrame converted data uh, including breaking it out into work instance uh, from uh, from an external computer, you know, using that API, and that means there's a way to query Alma, get that data, do something with it. Um, and yes, um, Misu says, so the converter is embedded in Alma. If we need to edit the converter, can each institution edit the converter? That's a good question we haven't discussed, but that kind of leads to, I think, the kinds of bigger questions that this kind of discussion can lead to is how, how are we going to need to be able to customize things? So as Ex Libris is, is looking at um, how to design uh, link data editing and, and integrate that into Alma. This is the question, you know, um, how, how not right now, I don't believe there's any way um, to modify that conversion process. Am I right, Itai? We only get the Library of Congress flavor of uh, mark to bid frame conversion. So um, <sighs> yes, so I'm, I'm not seeing the whole list here of people. Um, I think there was someone named Paloma from UT Austin that was gonna join us, gave a very interesting presentation at um, Semantic Web and Vib, uh, the SWIB conference, um, which happened just last week. Uh, and it was from a, 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 some experimentation they've done there on ex expanding uh, BibFrame uh, at the item level and using it for uh, rare, rare material, rare book uh, description. So there you would have a case of somebody with a BibFrame that goes beyond the standard BibFrame 2.0 for a specific community, uh, how would their conversion look if say they created some of this and um, wanted to convert it to Mark and, and the Library of Congress's converter doesn't know what to do with it. Um, and that also kind of begs the question of what rare book catalogers are doing now uh, which has implications for how our catalog works in all kinds of in interesting ways. But basically they're, they're putting item descriptive elements such as the signature that, you know, or a autograph that appears on such and such a page by this famous person into the bibliographic description when it really should be at an item level. Uh, and we have no good way with Mark to separate this out and, and have alternate ways of displaying it. So, um, so that points to a need to have a different flavor of bib frame and maybe a different flavor of conversion. So um, while we're talking and in this direction about how people would like to locally or would want to or need to locally customize things if they were gonna adopt BibFrame as their um, 
um, as their cataloging format of choice for new cataloging or even convert their entire uh, uh, mark catalog store to BibFrame. Uh, if you have other ideas about ways that may need to be local decisions or local customizations, shoot them out there. Yeah, I think I just posted the question number four. It's sort of a follow up with what Laura already alluded to, but I know we just have about a couple minutes left. So basically, um, our group, Linked Open Data Working Group, our job is to know, to understand your needs, and then to see if we could faci facilitate those uh, with other working group and then eventually have them developed by ex -liberis. So our job is to hear your needs, to understand uh, the challenges you're facing and your use cases and so on. So basically the last question, I hope it's sort of just ending today's um, conversation is, uh, we know when you are implementing link data and what is the sense you feel you have to do some you have to do some local choices and if this can be the one used by everybody then it won't be the local then can be looking into possibility of developing um okay so i see questions but anyway we have two more minutes left uh, mm -hmm. uh, Laura and I would like to know if you feel this type of town hall meeting is useful to you. Um, and also, if there's any topic you'd like to suggest for the future town hall meeting, because we're going to have well, three more at least for this coming year. If you have any topic you think will be important to talk about, uh, please let us know as well. Um, if you have questions haven't got being answered, we'd be happy to use our list to serve to continue this conversation. I feel we probably should build from this momento instead of just to do it at when we're at a meeting. If we can continue those through email discussing, that would be great as well. Mm -hmm. so Laura, you want to take a look at the, the question? Yes. Um... So um, Maria Oldal is asking um, for a link to that presentation about um, the bib frame for rare collections, and I don't have it handy. So um, what we can do is we can post to the linked open data working group. Uh, uh, we have a mailing list. Um, we can post to that. Um, we could. Um, I don't know if we can um, have a place to continue discussions, et cetera, on a document. Um, ah, Elsa Varela is providing a link to that um, presentation. So great, thank you. I have uh, cataloging rare books as link data and use case, and our speakers are Paloma Graciani Picardo, who you may remember from about 40 minutes ago. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. So um, that's a that's a presentation. Um, I'm not sure it's the same one, but it's it, on that topic. So that's great. Um, okay, so last thing I want to point out. Um, we do our working group um, have done some quite um, thorough analysis of mark to bib no bib frame to mark conversion tool. Uh, we created a spreadsheet list of some issues we noticed. Um, if you are interested to to see that information, I'd be happy to send you the link. Uh, we put that spreadsheet into a public folder and everybody who is interested can see it. 
but we reported um, some of those issues to Library of Congress already. And some of them probably as Lori, Laura mentioned, it's already in the line for, for enhancement. Um, some of them probably not relevant to LC, but anyway, so if you're interested, um, be happy to point you to that document. Um, there is a, a comment here oh. from uh, Radmila Valletta. I think local customization for BibFrame will depend on what dis the discovery interface for BibFrame will look like and the input we got from our public services librarians about changes they would like us to implement to improve discovery for users. Okay, so that's a, a really important dimension um, is, is the discovery environment, which is what I'm involved with now, is what happens to all this wonderful metadata uh, uh, on its way to getting to users um, and what the, how, how things could work differently or better once we've got linked data. Uh, and I think that's a really important point. So maybe a future topic. Okay, with that, I don't think thank I've, you so I've, much. And have I missed anyone? Or do we have to go now? I don't think I did. Yeah, I think one more thing that Judy uh, Williamson made a comment is um, mark to bib frame convert both the information in 245 and it's a paired 880 field. Mm -hmm. um, so that's additional comments. That's a nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a start. <laughs> okay. And with that, thank you so much for attending and uh, um, please watch for our uh, list to uh, for announcement for next uh, town hall meeting, uh, primarily the date, but if you have a topic you'd like to suggest, um, please send an email to uh, either me or uh, Laura, uh, either one of them is fine and we, we will we'll talk about it, but um, Again, we just want to make the meeting more meaningful, useful to you. And so if you have suggestions, we'll be very glad to take them. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you for coming.